I am Daniel Lukies and welcome to Book 101 Review. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years. And today I have my special guest. He's award-winning engineer and futurist. And of course, he is the author of the new book, Evolution and Dead. No other than Mr. JJ Jerome. Welcome to Book 101, Mr. Jerome. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks for having me. And can you please introduce yourself? Sure. My name is JJ Jerome. I'm an engineer and a futurist. Um, I started out being fascinated with two things in life, one of which was the human body and evolution, and the second one was electronic engineering. So I put them together and got a degree in biomedical engineering and have been lucky enough to be involved in many of the cutting edge technologies over the last 15 or 20 years. Yes, for being a award winning engineer, I give you a drum roll. <laughs> Thank you Thank for you. sharing your talents to the world. So let's talk about artificial intelligence and how does it differ from natural intelligence? Well, artificial intelligence and natural intelligence have more in common than they have differences. Both of them have the same basic structure. So within our brains, we have what we call neural networks. There are trillions of neurons in your head, and they are interconnected through synapses. And the synapses learn by use. The, the more they're used, the more sensitive they are. And because there's so many of them, they have the ability to remember patterns. And when they see something similar, to respond accordingly. Artificial intelligence, the big leap there is using something called artificial neural networks as opposed to straight line linear programming. And mathematically, these artificial neural networks act the same way as the neurons in your brain. And so the thought process is what we would call thought processes or computation or intelligence is essentially executed the same way these days with AI as it would be in your brain. The main difference is that AI has access to much more learning. You know, humans learn from their family, their friends, their siblings, school, but artificial intelligence learns from all the knowledge that's out on the internet. So Mr. Jerome, how did you connect that AI to evolution and that? Well, the big connection was in ancient times, up until recently, actually, all of human evolution was biologically based. It was based on survival of the fittest. Those people that couldn't survive in their environment eventually got wiped out. Their DNA didn't move forward. But starting in the 1950s, really starting in World War II, our technology in the first world countries, and especially America being a leader, uh, became so advanced that it has basically um, derailed survival of the fittest evolution. Think about things like antibiotics, think about things like uh, surgeries and all the cures, the vaccines that we have for diseases. That means that survival of the fittest functions less. And then in 1960, the birth control pill came out and it meant that we didn't necessarily evolve just naturally, we controlled our own evolution. As we've moved further and further forward, rather than evolving to our environment because of our advanced engineering, we are creating our environments, we are controlling our environments, we're controlling all the things. So there is no pressure, no environmental pressure to evolve one way or another. Now, artificial intelligence has taken this the next step because the very evolution of our thought, the evolution of our mental fitness, not just our physical fitness, is now being supplanted by machines. So being smart these days doesn't really buy you much when you can chat, you know, go to chat GPT and get all the answers. Definitely. 
Very well said, Mr. Jerome. So what are the primary types of AI and how they differ from each other? Well, the main types of AI that we see are machine learning and generative. And this is where the big leap is. So for many years, in fact, in my work, I've been using machine learning for many years. And machine learning is basically pattern recognition. It still uses AI, but it, it will allow you to recognize, for example, where things are going to go. Visual recognition, that, that face recognition that you have on your iPhone, for example, would use machine learning. And it learns about your features and it learns the statistics that, and it can predict who it is. The big leap came uh, really about two years ago when generative AI combined with computers that were fast enough to do it in real time came together and it created AI that could actually produce novel output. So in the past, AI was more analytical, but generative AI is now producing creative output, whether it's artwork, whether it's text narrative, whether it's answers to questions, it's actually statistically putting together what's on the internet and creating the most likely responses and producing them some completely original work. Yes. So can you explain the difference between narrow AI and general AI? Between, I'm sorry, I missed the first part of the question. Can you explain the difference between narrow AI and general AI. Um, are you talking about g artificial general intelligence? Yes. AGI? Okay. Yes. So AGI is artificial general intelligence is the, the next step. Um, right now, we have relatively narrow intelligence confined to certain areas. AI doesn't really think like a human. It doesn't leap from one thing to another, it doesn't make those connections between necessarily seeing a piece of artwork that looks like Amsterdam and the last vacation to Amsterdam and, and then going to Anne Frank uh, and then going to World War II. This is making connections between various areas. And right now, AI doesn't really do that very well. But the concept of artificial general intelligence is that AI would have such a grasp of the world that it would be able to make those leaps. So it would be able to look at artwork of the Netherlands and think back to how Hitler started in the same way that humans might take that thought process. So with AGI, it's basically thinking like a human. And the person who gave this the most thought, believe it or not, was Alan Turing, and he was active uh, during World War II. He was a brilliant mathematician and helped the Allies break the Nazi codes. And he was also probably the father of many of our artificial intelligence concepts. What Alan Turing did was to create a test called the Turing test to decide whether a machine was really thinking, whether it had AGI, or whether it was just computing. And the Turing test consisted of three entities in a room that couldn't see each other. Two of them were humans, and they were texting on a keyboard. And the third one was unknown. The third one could be a machine or it could be a human. And the three of them were supposed to have a substantial conversation together by texting. It might be politics, religion, artwork, anything they wanted to talk about. Children, their children. And if the two humans couldn't tell whether it was a machine or not, then it was considered to have passed the Turing test. Now, to date, no artificial intelligence has yet passed the Turing test. I mean, it requires cleverness. It, pro it provides uh, the ability to answer in a human-like way. But people predict that very soon, um, AI like ChatGPT will pass the Turing test. And then if a machine can said to be truly thinking, it creates a tremendous number of moral dilemmas. Because if it's truly thinking, does it not have all the rights of humans? And if it does, will we ever be able to unplug it and turn it off? That would be tantamount to murder. Mm. 
Yes, indeed. So, Mr. Jerome, can you share a chapter of Evolution and that that brings what we are talking about? Well, I think um, one of the chapters uh, towards the end, I think it's chapter 14, tells us about what life is going to be like and how this whole evolution and technologies like the Internet change the way that people will interact in the future. And it's starting to happen now. There's plenty of it going on. And the main difference that it talks about is the fact that human beings have always lived in a hierarchical structure. They've been led by alphas, alpha males for the most part, but alpha females have been effective leaders as well and are effective leaders. And so there was somebody at the top giving the orders. In the old days, it was the biggest, strongest person who people were either afraid of or had enough influence to have them follow. We still have alpha leaders like that today uh, Donald Trump's a good example of an alpha leader. And in the old days, people followed the alpha and they were somewhat subservient. But with the new order, everybody is becoming nodes on the network. We're all equal nodes on social media. With artificial intelligence, our opinions will be taken into the database. Things will work in real time. And so we're going to function as a society, more like an ant colony than as a uh, wolf pack, for example. One of the advantages is that everybody has some input, some say that alpha leaders aren't necessarily gonna dominate or bully their way into society, and that the status of the average person is not gonna be controlled so much by whether they're big and strong, but by their imagination and their thought processes. Very well said, Mr. Jerome, but before we go on, I want to shout out uh, my ranking tops for the last 30 days because in New Zealand, I got 81% on the Apple chart, Tanzania 99, Egypt 117, Moldova, United Kingdom, Poland, Bahrain, and many more. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created to empower writers, authors all over the world, like Mr. JJ Jerome. What is a machine learning and how it is related to artificial intelligence? Well, machine learning is one of the sub-disciplines of artificial intelligence. And again, um, this has been used for probably 20 years pretty effectively. It's basically pattern recognition using neural networks. And so just like we can recognize if somebody we know walks in the room, even, even from the back of their head, right? Uh, by the way, they move other things. In the old days, machines weren't good at that because you'd say it had to recognize something through specific parameters. So um, machine learning allows machines to learn not only visual recognition, but various other things. It, it could be even things like medical diagnosis, just through uh, learning over and over again, the patterns. Um, so that isn't so much the big talk. That's a relatively mature technology at this point. It's used in lots of things. Um, facial recognition is, is probably the most prevalent. The, the artificial general intelligence is where things are heading. And in the meantime, it's generative AI where all the excitement is. Yes. So do you think artificial intelligence will help us to find another planet to live in? Well, I think it's helpful in every aspect. Um, I don't know if we'll ever make it to another planet because the distances are immense. Uh, but what it can help us do and is helping us is to make this planet a lot more livable. For example, we're applying it to the power grid. Right now we have uh, in the whole world a big potential energy shortage as we try to pull the coal and fossil fuel plants offline, as we have more and more electric vehicles, as we have um, increased use from AI servers, and as the planet gets hotter, air conditioning use takes a lot more power. As we decarbonize to try to make the Earth uh, less prone to climate change, it's going to take a lot of electricity. And so AI is being used now to control what 
resources go on the grid, which resources go off the grid, basically control where every electron goes and make sure that we can provide enough power for everybody. Yes. So, Mr. Jerome, how has AI impacted the healthcare industry? Well, I was, it was very interesting because I was watching a podcast by Ray Kurzweil recently, and um, he's one of the pioneers in this area. And one of the biggest applications will be healthcare. In many countries now, it's hard to come by good health care. There's becoming a shortage of practitioners. Mental health especially has a shortage of practitioners. And AI stands to not only make it more efficient, but more accurate. And so recently, and I don't have the reference here, but, but it's, it's true, they ran some tests on diagnosis, AI versus conventional human doctors. And the AI scored way higher because it had access to more data, because it didn't have internal biases. And so most of the diagnosis, I think, in the near future is going to be at least augmented with AI. And then as we move forward, I think psychology and psychiatric care is going to become probably primarily AI. It'll learn to screen people for very serious mental health issues. It'll be able to do cognitive therapy and, and it'll be available and much less expensive. The whole thing's going to make healthcare more accurate and less expensive. Finally, AI has been used to develop, it is being used, new drugs and new proteins uh, in a much quicker fashion. Moderna used AI to come up with the COVID vaccine. Uh, it allows you to try many more possibilities much more quickly and produce drugs in record time. In evolution and the, did you discuss about healthcare? Uh, we did discuss about healthcare and we discussed about it in a little bit different way. The discussion in evolution ended is that healthcare is now so good technologically that practically everybody makes it to reproductive age and practically everybody can reproduce. In ancient times, it was only the fittest people that made it to reproductive age and only the fittest people who were able to ba bear and raise children with all the, the difficulties of living in ancient times. So now one more driver of evolution is gone because anyone can reproduce, even people who were essentially sterile through in vitro fertilization. In addition, um, the control over this, uh, keeps us from having any pressure to move forward. And what we see in society now is actually a decline in physicality. Um, in America, people are 26 pounds heavier now than they used to be. Diabetes is rampant. Mobility is less. People don't move around as much. Our IQs are dropping by one point per decade in the last century. And so with no pressure to evolve forward, random chance takes its place and we are actually de-evolving. De-evolving, what the factors that are uh, in a uh, quotient is getting lesser and lesser? Right, we're not going back to be cave cavemen and women, but what we're doing is physically losing our edge because it's no longer necessary. People these days, can only walk many people not very far. You look in Walmart, you see people driving around in electric carts everywhere. And they're not people with disabilities. We've just lost, lost the need to be physically fit. We've lost the need to be mentally fit. While Christopher Columbus navigated the ocean to America, we can barely go to our friend's house without Google Maps. And so we're losing these abilities. And we are now so dependent on technology that uh, society might collapse if we lost our technology. Hmm. For sure. Can AI exhibit creativity and how if so? I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand the question. Can you repeat it? Can AI exhibit creativity? Oh, yes. Yes. We, you know, humans are really good at thinking how special they are. They think we're the only ones who can be creative. 
the only ones who can feel, the only ones who can can think or have consciousness. I believe that because AI is essentially structurally similar to the way we think that it can do all of these things. Um, I recently asked AI to write a poem about our football team and do it in the style of Edgar Allan Poe. And it came up with an incredible poem. I've asked AI to create artwork and it's beautiful and it, it's very creative in the way it goes about doing these things. And so I think that AI can be enhance our creativity and uh, assist humans in being more creative. It, it also comes out with many possibilities that we've never thought of. Yes, for sure. So in evolution and that, how did you apply creativity? I think we applied creativity in the book by thinking totally differently about mankind. The book is about where we're heading, not just in the U.S., but as humanity in general. And we've never been there before. We've we've always functioned in a hierarchical way. We've always evolved physically and mentally. And the creativity there was to think about a different world where these pressures are released. And and towards the end, we go into to other things how humans are going to exist much more virtually than it's going to be more like COVID in many ways, because we'll have machine avatars out there that will do everything for us. Um, we'll live forever through our avatars. So if my, if grandma dies, we'll have an avatar that learned the way she's going to speak, the way she thought, the way she looked. And for the grandchildren, grandma will live forever because they'll just dial up her avatar on the phone or the computer, and the AI will be able to think just as she did, tell the grandchildren stories, tell them about how when the children, their parents were young, what they were like, give advice, and do all those things. We're going to have artificial entities that are the equivalent of humans in so many ways. We're going to be creating other entities that can think like us, talk like us, look like us. It's a whole new world. Whole new world. So, Mr. Jerome, what is your expectation in evolution on that? Well, many people are afraid of AI. Elon Musk and hundreds of other scientists signed a letter probably a year and a half ago that said how dangerous AI was. And I agree it's a powerful technology. Powerful technologies can be used for good or evil. Think about the atom bomb, for example, or even the Industrial Revolution that did so much good, but in many ways made it difficult for workers in the early days. And so and many people lost their jobs. So whenever we have powerful technology, there's potential for good and potential for evil. I'm very optimistic. I don't think that AI is going to be any more malicious than many of the bad actors that we have that are humans. In fact, I think it's going to be a force for good. It's going to be increased productivity. I think it's going to keep humans in certain ways on, within the bounds and on the right track uh, when people get a little off the rails these days. And so um, I think that human, uh, AI is going to be a great boon to society. We're all going to have better lives, be more productive. We'll be better off economically and uh, things like the climate will be better off. I think it's the natural evolution as humans got smart enough. This was the next step in our evolution. Yes, evolution and that is there will be a follow up for this book. Now, I think this is the, the one book for the moment, I have two more ones already written. It's a more about quantum physics. And then uh, the other one we're thinking about is a little bit of a follow up and tentatively calling it death of the alpha male to talk about the changes in society from the strong male leadership to now much more egalitarian society. Yes, you are most welcome to come back to promote all your books, Mr. Jerome. But before we go on, uh, please, I'm inviting you to please do purchase one of the, my best sellers audiobook, Stand Tall, Stand Together, Breaking the 
exchange of bullying. It's available and audible, of course, my book one one review volume three these are my 100 episodes of my first season suggestion volume three and speaking of climate change my earth fevered unraveling climate and our race to restore balance and one of my product of my book 101 review volume two selected as i said these are my products of my first season of my book 101 review and book 101 review volume one highly recommended and my two of my self-help book, Threads of Existence, Weaving the Tapestry of Life. And Life is Too Short, A Journey of Discovery of Fulfillment and Joy. Please do purchase them. Available bestsellers on Audible. So, Mr. Jerome, what are your short-term and long-term goals in writing? Well, I think uh, primarily I'm promoting the current book. I'm also available on audio uh, or on Audible as well as Amazon. Um, I want to get this other book out on quantum physics in the next three years, and um, we'll take it from there. Take it from there. And I, again, you are most welcome to come back and promote all your books. And lastly, what is the pros and cons of AI? Well, um, I think the pros far outweigh the cons. I think it's a tremendous tool that will have impact, significant impact, like the computer revolution, probably equal to the original computer revolution, almost as, as much as the internet. Um, certainly there are cons because it can go in and disrupt systems. And the main con that people are afraid of is when it starts to grow on its own, it can reprogram itself it can make itself better and the question is if we have an infinitely intelligent ai will it want to um not consider humans as well as they're considered now so the cons are we can't really control it i think that's the big con the big pro is that it's going to make us better yes we cannot control it, but we can make it. <laughs> so do you think artificial intelligence will be a threat for human being as what they depicted on all these movies? Yes, we, we've been programmed by the movies to fear it. Everything from The Terminator to the book uh, I, Robot by Isaac Asimov, where he put three laws of robotics in place to, to keep AI. And AI and robotics are really similar. Um, to keep it under control. There's a lot of fear there, again, because we can't control it. My response is that when humans control things, they don't do a great job anyway, so I don't think it's going to be any worse. <laughs> so, Mr. Jerome, can you please invite our listeners to support Evolution and that? Sure. Uh, I think it's a very unique book. It's gotten some great reviews and uh, check it out on Amazon and Audible. And um, the people who've read it have uh, had their eyes open to a number of things. Yes, people, let's support Mr. JJ Jerome because he's, you support him. More, more, more knowledge to come. Okay. And people and Mr. Jerome, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Daniel. Body come, people. See you soon. Okay, let me know when it drops. <laughs>